right guys, in this episode, we're gonna be talking about the basics of single table inheritance in Active Record. So I've got a Rails application here and we're gonna create a base model for our single table inheritance. I'm gonna call it event, and event is going to need a type column. This is what Rails uses as a special column for single table inheritance. You can't actually use this for anything else out of the box, you can actually turn off single table inheritance if you wanna use this for some other purpose, but if Rails detects you have a type column, it will automatically start using single table inheritance on that model. So let's take a look at how this works. I'm gonna also add a params JSON column here so that we can take a look at how this applies to a real example. This is actually how I organized the noticed gem for sending notifications in your Rails apps. Uh, and I just finished version two of it and it takes heavy advantage of single table inheritance for some cool stuff that we're gonna talk about in this lesson and the next one. So let's start here. We're gonna create an event uh, model for storing the notification events. The other thing that we wanna do is create a separate model called notification, where it's going to be a single table inheritance one as well with the type column. And this is going to have a recipient belongs to polymorphic column. So we can say this uh, notification needs to be delivered to these 1000 people or five people or whatever it is, no people. So we will have an event has many notifications and we will keep track of everything in these two models. So let's go ahead and create those two. And we'll say Rails DB migrate to create them. And we can open up our code base in VS Code. And you'll see we have the event model. It has nothing uh, special in here. You don't even know that it's an STI model. So we'll say has many notifications. And our notification belongs to a recipient but it also belongs to an event uh, and I forgot that. So let's go and Rails DB rollback real fast. Undo that migration. We'll grab this last one and we'll say T belongs to event. It is not polymorphic and it will say null is false on that. Okie dokie. So Rails DB migrates and we'll have belongs to event here. So now we can create an event and many notifications for that. Um, so the notification would be pointing to like users or accounts or something else. And the event is where we want to define, you know, there's a new comment. So we want to send that comment out to all of the users who are in that comment thread, for example. So how do we define those notification uh, types? Well, we first need to give them a generic name in my case, I decided to call them notifiers. So we're gonna say app notifiers um, to mimic what we've done in the notice gem. And we can have notifiers in here like new comment uh, notifier.rb. And then we might want another one in here too, like uh, mention notifier. So imagine someone mentions you in a comment, we might want a special notification for that type or something, um, just making up ideas here. So we're going to say, this is the mention notifier class, and it needs to inherit from something, and we are going to make it inherit from the event. And this inheritance is going to be what um, we mean by single table inheritance. We're going to have a class here called mention notifier that's an active record object because it inherits from an active record object, but event is going to be the one that tells it we're going to save the stuff in the database in the events table. This is not going to look for a mention notifiers table. It's actually going to save stuff in the events table. And the reason it's going to do that or be even able to do that is because of that type column that we did earlier. So let's add that new comment notifier, inherit from event as well. And we'll save these two and open up the Rails console and I'll show you what I mean. So. If we want to interact with the event model, we can say, give me the last event. It says, let's query from the events table. We'll order them by ID, blah, blah, blah. We don't have any records yet, that's fine. If we want to interact with the mention notifier, we can use this just like an active record object because it inherits from event, which is an active record object. So if we do this, it is going to realize 
oh, this inherits from events. So we actually want to use the events table when we um, query for mentioned notifiers. But what you'll see is it injected this where clause into the SQL. And the where says the type should be mention notifier. So active record single table inheritance is going to allow you to define Ruby classes that know to all talk to the exact same database table. Um, but when we interact with them, it will inject some queries, um, query clauses like the type there, but will also inject the type column when we save a record. So if we say mention notifier.create, this is going to insert into the events table, but it's going to automatically set the type column to mention notifier for us. And you'll see that here in the object we get back. And it gives us a mention notifier back as well. So this is really interesting because if we want to look at all of the different events, we can say event.last, and it is going to not give us an event object or an instance. It will give us a mention notifier instance because it queried the events table. And for every record, it goes through and looks at them and says, oh, you have a type column. What is in there? It says mention notifier. Let's find the constant for that mention notifier class. Then we'll go instantiate that with the attributes of this record. So rather than doing that for the events table and only pulling out event objects, it's analyzing every record and seeing that type column and giving us Ruby classes back. So if we were to say new comment notifier.create, we can do event.last and we will get a new comment notifier instance back. The type column is automatically set there. And if we do event.all, what it will do is give us an array of those two records we created, but it's gonna be of those different types. So it's gonna be a mention notifier and it's going to give us the new comment notifier. So this array isn't giving us a bunch of event objects back, it's giving us those Ruby um, objects back as we originally created them. So this is super awesome because when we want to build something like notifications, we're gonna need things like a message that is something like, there is, uh, there is a new comment on whatever post. You know, you see this in Facebook and Twitter and all kinds of stuff like that, Reddit, uh, where they have like a message they display in the URI, or in the URL, on the website, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then they also have a URL. When you click it, it goes and takes you to that comment or the post or whatever it is. So we would need a way to have, you know, the comment URL in here, things like that. But if we put that on the event itself, we would have to do if statements for everything. We'd have to do like a case and we do the type and say when it's new comment notifier, then we want this message, when it's mention notifier, we want a different message, and maybe we have a fallback message and so on. And we'd have to do conditionals everywhere and it would be terrible. So the way that this is solved is we can implement these methods on our notifiers themselves. So new comment notifier can go to one place, but the mention notifier um, will have something else. Someone mentioned you, and this could be like a mentions URL, something, whatever it is that we wanna send the user to. And what's really awesome about this is we can reload our code and we can say, give me the event.last and ask it for the URL. And it's gonna try to call that method, uh, let's do the one that actually works, the message. It's going to give us back the message from the uh, type that we have set on there. So if we get the new comment notifier back, we get the message from the new comment notifier class. If we say event.first.message, we're gonna make, get the mention um, message method, and it's gonna return a different string. So this is awesome. It allows us to uh, basically remove those conditionals because we've created types for each of the things that we have, but the storage for all of it is basically the same. Conceptually, notifications for any type of situation that happens or any activity are all the same, but everything about them is different. A 
comment notification is different than a mention. Uh, file upload is finished is a different notification, references something else. But conceptually, all of that is the same. They're all events. They all have some messages. They all have a URL that you want to click on and take them to. So we are able to use single table inheritance to consolidate that abstract concept of a notification like event and give it one single place for storage, but a way that our Ruby code can go separate them and treat them all separately, even though they're basically the same thing. So this is awesome. This works really, really well. And um, as I was building Noticed, I realized like, you know, this makes perfect sense. We originally didn't require you to save it to the database. So I didn't in version one uh, use single table inheritance. And as I was working on some problems and trying to improve and simplify uh, the Notice gem in version two, I realized like, why don't we just require you to save this in the database? Uh, that would solve like all of our problems. So I ended up doing that and here we are. We have STI and it works just like this where we generate a class that inherits from an event and voila, we have a new notifier. Uh, these are really cool because they work just like active record objects because they are and we can then create them and then queue them up as jobs and send them off to being delivered to our users. So that is the basics of single table inheritance and a really good example of why this can be so powerful. The common examples you see of a user could be a teacher, could be a student, and they could have other things um, is kind of a contrived example that a lot of times you will see, but it's not super practical. So this is the one where I really wanted to show this off because uh, it shows the power of uh, having the right concept for your situation. So in our case, with notifications, single table inheritance works extremely well to allow you to customize each notification to its needs, but yet the storage for all of that is exactly the same across them. So that is it for this episode, but in the second lesson, we're gonna follow up on this because the notifications themselves had an issue where we wanted to render these out because this is where when you're logged in, you are the current user. We wanna grab all your notifications. So you have to actually query the notification table through this association. And it made it hard because our helper methods were easily defined here in the notifiers, but that's the separate model. So how can we make a easy way for you to be able to inject helper methods onto the notifications? Well, we ended up using a crafty little thing with STI and a block to pull that off. So we'll talk about that in the next lesson. And uh, I will leave you here uh, waiting patiently, hopefully, uh, for the next episode. So until then, I will talk to you later. Peace.